hi everyone and welcome back to the channel it's anna with you here and thank you all for coming back and for watching me today we have a new information video about the private schools here in spain i know some of you were waiting for this video um i've been checking all the information for quite some time so now i'm ready to let you know all the recent information so let's start um first of all here in spain if some of you don't know um we have different types of schools one of them are public schools um private schools and then we have um semi private or semi-public you can call them how you want to so what is the difference public schools are the ones where you don't have to pay anything except for the school meal if your children are staying at school for lunch and then for um later some extra extra curriculum activities let's say let's call them like that um then you have the semi-public or semi-private schools where you have to pay a small fee comparing to a private school's price which is approximately 120 150 euros depending on the area of spain and um, there you also have to wear a uniform and um, you pay for the um, lunch as well it's kind of better than a public school but it's also some more expensive than a public one and today's star is a private school Private schools um, are the ones where you have to pay every month or once a year. You have to pay for the whole school year, uh, the fee, uh, the monthly fee. Plus, you have to pay the uh, booking and pre-booking of the school's place, of your child's place at school, which is usually paid in April. Um, depending on the on the school and the area, this price is approximately 400 to 500 euros you pay it once and like this you have um, confirmed that your child has a place in that school for the next year um, then you have to pay both monthly you have to pay for the lunch which is obligatory in a private school because your children in a private school are staying from nine to five um, you also have the option to um, let your children not to go for lunch to, at school you can take them home but then you have to bring them back to school again for um other activities until five so private schools the price i think the most important thing um what parents want to know is about the price of school the prices are very very different uh here in spain you can find some private schools for about 300 euros a month um but these normally are spanish private schools let's say like that they're not oriented for um for uh, foreign children, for children whose native language is not Spanish or the ones that want not, they are multicultural families, for example. Um, so these schools are not quite oriented for these this type of children and they um, uh, ask you to have a Spanish level very high, but they don't offer any um, like classes for that. So it's kind of complicated situation. Um, and... Uh, the best schools in my opinion my personal opinion are either uh, private schools that are 100 percent in english you can choose those um the price for those are normally around 500 to 600 euros this is for small children for primary uh depending on how old your child is the price is getting higher every year you have to know that and take it into account as well because this is very important thing um you have to bear in mind that when your child grows and when um he or she will be in the last few years of school you'll have to pay about a thousand euros for each of your children if you have more than one the good thing is that if you have more than one child and they're going to the same school they'll get some discounts um in each school there are different some schools uh, directly offer you a 50 percent discount on the second one some schools 25 and on the third child 50 and then the all the other ones are going like having 100 percent off of price um this is different in each of them but you have to think also about the future so right now for example for a six-year-old we are paying um 507 euros plus 141 for um the school lunch 
for a lunch break so basically it's around 600 something euros each month for school for a six-year-old that's my cat cookie um and uh basically it's it's only getting bigger each year the price will grow and grow and grow until when she's going to be about 16 we're going to have to pay about thousand euros so you have to think about that as well think about the future so private schools have two options as i've already mentioned they have 100 percent english or a mixed 100 percent english is a british curriculum um according to the uh, british education all the books everything 100 percent is in english children have to talk to teachers in english everything is as if you would be in england or in uk like in uk or in uh, us somewhere you know in english-speaking countries um the other option is to have half and half this is one that we personally chose for our daughter um this is the option that small children start with 70 like preschool start with a 70 percent of english and 30 spanish and then when they start primary from six year old in advance uh, they have 50 percent in english 50 percent in spanish um, and this will maintain up until the end of school plus they will be getting some extra hours of um, extra foreign language uh, which might be either german french or any other russian for example depending on the school chinese they also offer chinese a lot of the private schools so this is a very good option um, as well as private schools have very very high level of um education in in the way that all the teachers for example if they teach you english they are native speakers all the teachers that teach you spanish are native speakers as well um so there won't be any difference in the accents or in the pronunciation or in the grammatic errors so children are basically learning from the native speakers which actually means a lot when you're learning a language um also so we know already the price we know the type of language which they have another thing to say about languages is that depending on the area where you plan on going um some schools have dialects uh, like all public schools have dialects uh, if for example in madrid there's going to be like traditional spanish um but if you go to valencian community if you go to catalonia or some uh, north part of spain there are some dialects like here in valencian community there is a valencian dialect so um even though in public schools they 100 percent teach in valencian dialect so that's quite hard that's why a lot of uh, people who come from abroad um they choose to go to private schools if they can afford it uh, so basically what's happening in private schools with the language as i've said already they teach um 50 in english 50 in spanish but they have another extra hour or two depending on the school that they are forced to teach valencian dialect at least it's not the whole education in valencian or in any other dialect it's just one or two hours for children to basically understand just even if it's a little bit a small tiny bit of the dialect just in case they will stay here because um when they are going to university uh valencian is like obligatory um dialect to learn and to understand at least so this is what's happening if you go to a private school you will avoid dialects but there's going to be still at least one hour of it every week um private schools what they have as well we know the prices we know the dialects language um they also have uniforms you have to be prepared that every year you have to buy a uniform or at least some part of a uniform the um, most difficult part is when they change from one uh, part of school to another let's say if they go from preschool to the primary uh, that's when they change completely the uniform and everything that you have before doesn't suit you because you need to have another type of clothes um, normally they are not cheap either they're not 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 cheap they are quite expensive um usually they um the school sends you like um a uniform like paper with a uniform uniform magazine where you have all the prices you have shops that sell the uniform usually here in spain uniforms are bought in el corte inglés which is like a huge shopping mall with different brands and they have a section 
uh, of school uniforms for children. So they collaborate with almost all private schools or semi-private schools here in the area. And this happens in all the areas of Spain. Usually the uniforms are only available in El Corte Inglés. Um, so what's happening? Uh, they, you not only have to buy, for example, like a sweater or a jumper or a t-shirt or a skirt, um, pants. You also have to have specific shoes, um, not the ones that you want to, uh, of specific color and specific model. And you also have to have specific, um, let's say, coats or jackets, you know, that you put on you when it's winter and it's very cold. These are also specific ones. You cannot buy the ones that you want. You cannot. You have to also have a specific scarf or a hat or a, like a swimsuit when you go swimming because a lot of private schools have a pool where they teach children how to swim and they have some swimming lessons when it's a little bit warmer. So yeah, this is basically for, uh, for a uniform in general. We, for example, we spend about 200 to 300 euros, depends. Um, this is only if you buy one of each. If you buy two of each, then uh, it's obviously a lot, a lot more expensive. So you have to think about that as well. It's not only just the price of school. It's not only price for lunch. It's as well as uniforms. You have to pay for the school material, which gets uh, higher and higher as the time goes. Uh, in the beginning of September, you usually pay for the school material. Um, which in my case, when my daughter is six years old right now, she's going in one of the best schools here in the area, luckily. Um, and she's, we are paying approximately 430 something euros in September for the school material. This is going to be a little bit higher when she grows up because they will have their own iPads that they will take home where they get to do some homework and some, some like uh, activities as well. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the other extras that you have. What extras else you can have? Excursions. This is an extra that they don't really ask you if you want to or not. They just say to you that um, there's going to be this excursion, this is the price. Um, and the, the money will be discounted from your bank account on the next month. Um, obviously, you can say, no, my child doesn't want to go, but usually everyone goes, everyone. It's not like it was in my times when a lot of children didn't go to excursions, the other ones did. Um, here, it's like everyone goes, always. Um, and if you say no, it's kind of your child, it will kind of be, okay, mommy, they are making friends at excursions, they are uh, having a very great time and I'm at home, don't have any classes, like, it's not kind of not fair to them, you know. So um, everyone goes to excursions and it's a minimum of 25 euros each. Also, they do pictures every year. Um, they not only do a class picture, but um, which is separate from, from the others. But at the beginning of a year, they usually do like um, a big photograph where they have the entire class and uh, some names like of all the all the primary section let's say or all the preschool and then separately their uh, faces and their names and the teachers and all that uh, so they also have another one which is about 30 euros of cost and i don't think that it's fair to sell it as a whole um set of pictures which is only your child but in different pictures some um Christmas cards, some different calendar types, um, like notes to put in books when you read it, like all the different, like a huge photo like that, small pictures, like passport pictures. I don't think it's fair to sell it as a whole set because a lot of people don't want a lot of those things. They only want one picture of their child, you know, or like some separate items. So, um, but this is what private schools do. I mean, this it is what it is. We know what we're, we are going into when we go to a private school. Uh, so this is the truth. Not everything is good. Um, also, you have some extra, um, extra like things for, at school, like dancing, ballet. You have um, play doh, like uh, some uh, art. You have singing. You have uh, musical lessons. You have uh, taekwondo, karate, and tennis. 
volleyball you have like a bunch of different options for your children if you want to get them to some extra activities after school um you have some lessons of spanish as well or lessons of english extra that they can do um while being into school so not separately from the school timetable which of course you have to pay for for all the extra activities you have to pay and it's not cheap um what's happening about the education itself um the education in my opinion is very good in private schools i like the way that they teach and that they have a lot of different options to show children how things work and why they work like that um they have an opportunity to do huge amount of different experiments uh, to see how things grow they um for example they invite doctors to school to show ch children how to uh, how the heart beating is what it is they can do some echo sound um like ultrasound they can do they can show like organs of, of i don't know of animals of different things so it's more interactive and it's more interesting for children as well than just learning from books um in public schools they don't have really this option because they are quite limited in money and they don't don't have simply the option to send someone to school to show children something um they're just learning from books or from presentations but the bad thing is that in public schools they don't have um really that kind of amount of new technologies they don't really have new technologies everything is quite old um so this is another thing why i don't really like public schools that's my personal opinion as of the schools that i've seen in our area which is benidorm altea albir which is in this area right around benidorm um, maybe and i'm sure there are quite a lot of public schools that are very very good but at least in our area this is not the case sadly so in private schools they have a lot of different uh, IT technologies, they have new iPads, they have um, computers, they have like projection boards and all that, interactive boards as well for children, which kind of prepares them a little bit more. I have a feeling that it lets them to learn all the things before they actually are going to this world to um, like to work and to study in university because um, in today's modern world, it's very, very necessary to learn um, about the all IT technologies, how to use them, um, because if not, like it's, it will be impossible. Almost in every job right now, you have to use a computer at least, or even more, so it's, it's a necessary thing. Uh, so this is very good about private schools. They have quite a lot of uh, different te new newest technologies, um, and... Um, it's quite a good um quite a good immersion inside of the world of IT for children from the young age uh showing them that it's not only for games like iPads and phones are not only for gaming and like chatting they also serve for something more than that which is very important like like lesson uh, as well as right now private schools are a lot better prepared than public schools due to the current situation of the pandemics um, what they have is they have a huge like um, they have some screens like robots that control temperature of everyone who enters or exits if a temperature exceeds the norm the door just doesn't open um, they have uh, automatic disinfection uh, throughout all the schools the school is closed no one can go in or go out uh, so it's quite safe and in classrooms also it's very safe with the distance keeping with the continuous monitoring and checking they have doctors inside the school as well as nurses so it's like a huge difference with public schools sadly um, the other thing that i like a lot is that private schools are a closed territory um, public schools also are closed but um, in public schools in a lot of them it's very easy either to escape or to um somehow uh, avoid classes let's say uh, not to go to school go somewhere else but in private schools um it's almost impossible because on the entrance and the exit which is the same part they have a security guard which also it always is checking cameras and is there so no one is able to go in or out just like that when they want to um, so this is very good security for your children and safety for your children as well. 
Um, what about the school material? As I've already said, you have to pay it in advance, but the good thing is that you don't have to worry about buying it or looking for it somewhere. Uh, for public schools, usually they go like, give like a coupon and they send all the lists to um, uh, Carrefour, which is like a huge shopping, like, like a supermarket, but they sell a lot of different bunch of things like electronics, IT, they sell food, they sell clothes and a lot of bunch of things. So they usually send the Carrefour your details and then Carrefour calls you whenever books are there and you can go and pick them up. Uh, this is quite a conflict between parents and the supermarket because sometimes it's taking too long and um, the reality is that children's in, children in a public school sometimes just don't get the books on time, which doesn't happen in the private ones because in private ones they just charge you the money on your account and your child, your child on the first day of school already have has everything that you need. You don't have to buy them pens. You don't have to buy pencils. Um, I don't know erasers. You don't have to buy any, nothing at all. You don't have to buy anything. They give you everything that your child will need throughout the whole um, school year. So this is very very good. Um, of course, sometimes children want to have something special for them, like special pen, uh, with their favorite um. I know like a superhero or, or an animal or something but um in a private school they teach you that um in a sense that you are all kind of equal and you all have uh the same thing so no one is better or worse than the other one which is quite a paradigm as i think of it because um the thing is, one thing is what the school teaches you, but the other thing is that actually happens. So private schools basically say that you are all equal, that no one is better or worse than the other one, but all the children have a different potential and they, um, even though you all have a different things, you're all not the same. Some of you are like, um, it doesn't mean that one of you is richer, one of you is poor, but um, they make it like in a way that it doesn't depend on how much money your parents have uh, they that the school doesn't look for it that basically all children are in this sense the same for them they equally love all of them and uh, teach equally all of them and uh, it just doesn't matter who has a better pen or a school bag or something like that the truth is that it's still happening in private schools um, as children grow, they start looking for cars, they start being interested in a lot of different things, which is not always good. In, in some schools where there are, uh, especially that's happening with Russian families, I don't know why, but um, like I myself am Russian, so I don't really um, have that type of relationship with my daughter. I don't try and give her that kind of values, but... Um, a lot of families have this problem that um, some of them have more, some of them have better cars or better homes. They go to vacations to some exotic like places and super expensive ones. They have boats, I don't know, they have like a lot of different bunch of things. Um, better toys maybe. So what's happening? From some certain age in private schools, uh, children that are Russian speaking or like a different language. Normally it happens with Russians more than any others. Um, with Russian speaking, they're like making some groups only of the, like children that are Russians and they start in between themselves, like telling, okay, what my, well, my dad has a Maserati. Well, what, what does your dad have or your mom have? Like, you know, they start comparing things that they have, like material things that they have. Um, like we went to Barbados this week. We went to there. Where did you go? Like, did you go anywhere? You know, they are kind of beginning to start competitive in a way which is not very good but the school the good thing is that in private schools you also have a psychologist you have all the different um people that are helping your child to orient themselves in to to the correct way and um, not to let them be um like involved in all different conflicts in between the children um so they are helping constantly and letting you know how the things are at school and how your child is evolving if there are any problems if not you also have um like meetings uh, regular meetings with the teachers if you want to um to discuss any kind of issues that might be uh, so normally private schools are quite good at 
stopping the things before they go further, which is not always happening in the public ones. In the public ones, um, it's not a constant problem, but sometimes there are cases of bullying, um, which is not really happening in a private one because there is a lot more of control and the rules are very, very strict. Uh, and if not, the child will just get um, out of school. That's it. They'll just be informed, the parents will just be informed that this issue happened and that's it, your child is out of school. Um, so yeah, this is basically what's happening. I think it's been quite a long time since we've been talking. I don't want to do this video too long, but this is basically what's happening in private schools. There is a very, very good education. Um, prices are quite high, but if you can um, pay this price, uh, this is just the best education and the best opportunity um into the world of different works and employment that you can give to your child uh one last thing very important one is that private schools have erasmus programs and they have programs of dual uh, certificate where your children can study both up abroad and here in spain and then they get certificate as well of uh, acknowledgement of international studies and um, as by statistics, uh, children that are going from private schools have almost 100% of success of going into the university and to the profession that they chose. So yeah, this is basically quite a huge difference with the public ones, which is very, very sad because uh, I don't think that the education in public schools is bad. No, uh, it's just public schools don't have that much um, opportunities to give different Kind of opportunities to give to the children as the private ones have because they have more money obviously um so yeah this is what i wanted to let you know about the private schools if you uh, have any more questions some specific questions about the different areas or about um the um any kind of subjects that are in the school language pricing everything that you want to know don't hesitate to leave a comment right here i'll be very happy to answer you as soon as i can thank you all for subscribing and for putting likes uh, we are already 55 thank you all for this great news and i hope our channel will continue to grow and expand and have a very very nice evening today bye everyone